gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, he used to have a couple of bands, many of which were featured on your favorite lunch boxes, but now he is the author of Hey Grand Dude, Paul McCartney's here. Um, I want to thank you uh, from my, my two sisters, two of my sisters, Mary and Margo. I'm one of 11 children, and they're, uh, they're the eldest two girls. And they saw you. They wanted me to pass on their thanks to you. They saw you at DC Stadium Ooh. on August 15th, 1966. And it was the first time my sister Mary was allowed to drive at night. <laughs> and it was a holy day of obligation. It's the Feast of the Assumption. And she was up. My mother allowed them not to go to church, even though my older brothers, Jim and Ed, wanted to tell them they were going to hell. <laughs> Especially since it was right around the time that John had said that you guys are bigger than Jesus. So that mm. was definitely straight to hell yeah. after that. Yeah. They said they could not hear a note. Nor could I. <laughs> what were those early stadium concerts like? Um, I mean, we enjoyed them. The early ones we enjoyed because it was success and it was, you know, they were going crazy. The crowd's going crazy. Mm -hmm. So you love it even if you can't hear yourself. After a little while, we just started thinking, you know, we're musicians and we can't hear ourselves. So it got a little bit wearing after a while. But uh, at the beginning, it was, it was fabulous. And we used to milk it. You know. What do you mean? Woo woo woo. <laughs> We knew that would do it. <laughs> that, that, would, that, would, that, would, that would trigger the younglings? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. In fact, it's funny, I, I do concerts now, and uh, there's a girl who comes, and she says, I can do a Beatles scream like my mom. She holds up a card. Oh, wow. So, remember, so I said, OK, girls, come on. I said, when we first came over here, you know, we couldn't hear a thing. So I said, all right, girls, you know, this is like 40,000 people in an arena. I said, all right, let's hear, let's hear a Beatles scream. Girls, come on. <laughs> so yeah, no, that's what it was like. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it was fabulous, you know, because it was, like I say, we were coming to America, we were successful. And the thing was that most of the British acts, in fact, I think all of the British acts who came to America, except like Chaplin, um, hadn't been successful. So music acts, because some of the guys were trying to be like Elvis, and you had Elvis. Some, right. you know, you had all the people they were trying to be like. Um, so we knew we had to be different, and we were. <laughs> what do you think was different? What was the thing that was different about your sound than other people at the time? Um, we, we were like an amalgamation, amalgam, amalgam? Sure. Why not? Amalgam, sorry. Amalgamation, yeah. Malcolm. Um, a, we drill, were, a drillin'. We, a, dr a drillion. <laughs> a drillion. I can feel it now. Um, now, we were a mixture of all the people we'd loved, but we weren't any individual one of them. So we were like Everly Brothers when John and I sang harmony. We were like Buddy Holly when we did those kind of songs. We were like Elvis when we did this. So uh, it just made up to a new sound. Mm -hmm. And we wrote a lot of our own stuff. So, um, and that was a little bit unusual then. Paul, do you remember when we were at the White House together for the Obama's final party? Like their, like, lose the damage deposit party? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was very nice. I saw yeah. you had already, already seen you and your lovely wife Nancy upstairs and we had talked briefly, but then I saw you right outside the men's bathroom downstairs mm -hmm. in the library in, in, the, in the basement mm -hmm. of the White House. I warned you about that. Yes. <laughs> and you said, you said, this is a nice room. And I said, it is, yeah, that's, Paul, that's uh, George Washington's actual sword on the wall. Do you remember what you said to me at the time? Remind me. You told me about your knighting, when you got knighted. Yeah, I, I told you that I got knighted by Her Majesty the Queen. Yes. And um, it's quite something, yeah. you can imagine, you know. Yeah. And what you have to do is you're not allowed to turn your back on her, so you kind of announce... Because she'll stab you? Why don't you just turn it? <laughs> I've never thought of might that. Be, might that be, That could be Because she's got a sword, right? She's got a sword. Jeez. I, that's yeah. So you walk in, not turning your back on her sure. for one second. Sure. And 
you stand in front of her, then you walk down there, and there she is, you know, the queen of the whole world. <laughs> sure. And she's got this, this sword. Um, anyway, what, you've got a little red cushion, and you've been, you've been told what to do. So you kneel down on the cushion, and then she takes the sword and does it either side of your shoulder and, and then says, arise, Sir Paul. So you were an ordinary guy, and when she does that, you're now magically Sir Paul. Wow. It's just like Harry Potter. <laughs> That's what I thought. Similar. But... But... But the thing is... The sword is special. That's why we were talking about George right. Washington's sword. The sword belonged to Ethelred the Unready. Wow. I mean, anyone that's like a thousand-year-old sword. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's an old sword. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you uh, told me that. Yeah, Ethelred. You said, you said, I said, that's like a thousand-year-old sword. You said, yeah. And then you looked up at Washington's sword and you went, so that's a nice sword. <laughs> <laughs> The book is Hey Grand Dude. The Grand Dude is Paul McCartney, everybody. We'll be right back.